Hello everyone. We are here today. Uh, we have Allison and Alice and behind the screen is Tori and we are talking about sexuality and chocolate and in coordination with Frida. And so Allison and Alice, do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. Yeah, start Allison. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Allison Zapata. I'm an um, artist, visual artist here, living here and working, born in Pittsburgh. I'm part of the Not White Collective, which is a group of 13 women artists. We're visual artists, dancers, poets, um, singers, uh, musicians um, from all throughout Pittsburgh, but also from uh, our roots are from all over the world. So we uh, cross cross cultures. Um, we're here to uplift under uh, under um, underheard voices uh, through artistic means. Um, so yeah, so I am so excited to be a part of this uh, in conjunction with the Frick Fine Arts Museum. And I have my friend here today because I wanted to make this fabulous uh, recipes. I wanted to have great conversation and I, you know, you have some great yeah. friends to, to bring along. So yeah. So I'm Alice Beckett Rumberger and I am Ecuadorian American, born in Washington, D.C to an Ecuadorian mom and a California dad. Found our way to Pittsburgh when I was about five years old. Wait, 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 they're saying we are muted. <gasps> oh, no. So I have no idea how. No, we're muted. Oh, that, that was really good. It was, but they just said that I think you're muted. So let's figure oh, out. Wow. We might be muted, I don't know. Shoot, okay. Okay, hold on. We're working out technology issues. Okay, can you hear us now? Oh, we can hear you! Yes. Yay! Okay, there we, we go. Can start all over again. So come all right, back out. go on back. We'll go and introduce you. Yeah, we'll do it again. Okay. Oh okay. my god! Wow, that okay. was a good uh, dry run. Dry they said run. just a little louder. They can hear, but we just needed a little louder. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So starting over. Hi, my name is Allison Zapata. I'm a Pittsburgh artist, visual artist, uh, Mexican descent. Um, I'm part of the Not White Collective, which is a, um, a collective of 13 women artists here um, within the uh, Pittsburgh area. Um, we're a group of um, visual artists, musicians, singers, poets, uh, installation artists, um, all different ranges of, of the arts, um, but we also are cross-cultural. We have women that are uh, not only American, but also Ecuadorian. Um, we have women who are um, Mexican-American. We have um, all different... Um, Filipinos, Filipino. Filipino, right? yeah. yeah. We have all different um, uh, um, uh, cultures. cultures. <laughs> yeah, all different cultures. Uh, you know, live. Perspectives. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so what we're, we're together, we work together to uplift underrepresented voices here in Pittsburgh through the arts. Um, so we're doing this collaboration with Frick Pittsburgh and we're very excited about it um, in, um, uh, on the backs of the uh, Frida Kahlo photo exhibition. So yes, I'm so excited and today I have here, I brought some friends to uh, join in. To yeah. Yeah. Talk and about we have a little bit of a coolness going on, if you guys can see oh. it. I was able to get us streamed to both. So oh, we nice. have two different streams going on. So we're going to have in front of the scenes and then behind the scenes. Okay, okay. perfect. I think there's an echo. So oh, cool. it. Yeah, we're going to fix the echo. So my name is Alice Rauberger, and I am an Ecuadorian American. I was born in Washington, D.C., came to Pittsburgh when I was about five years old. My mother is Ecuadorian. My father is born and raised in Southern California. I'm myself here in Pittsburgh and ended up with a joint venture with Allison called Cocinando con Arte, where we bring passion of cooking with people's passion of their cultures, Latino women, together into cohorts. We've had three cohorts so far. Had a little pause with the pandemic, but mm -hmm. we'll be coming back really strong. I'm excited that cooking is one of my passions. I love all forms of cooking, but being in the kitchen with my grandmother growing up and spending time in summers in Ecuador are things that are super dear to my heart. So when Allison said, hey, we're doing a collaboration with Frida Kahlo, the Frick Museum, adding the non-white collective amazing women, mm -hmm. you want to come in and 
Tori's going to be here with us. I said, oh my gosh, it doesn't matter what I'm doing today. I'm here. So we're here and we want to talk about this little thing. So I am not part of the non-white collective. But I'm really check. happy to be Let me go check real oh. quick here. I'm really happy to be a part of this, um, having out. So I'm Victoria Snyder and I am the founder of Self Care Senorita, based here in Pittsburgh. Frida Kahlo, fan, fanatic, freak, ancestor. Um, I am Mexican by lineage, and so there is a deep calling to Frida. Um, she's been my shiro for years since I first kind of came into her. So to have the Frick do um, an exhibit featuring her and then alongside these beautiful women. And we're talking about food, we're talking about chocolate, we're talking about sexuality and chocolate. And um, when we were brainstorming what we wanted to do with this, we had talked about how Frida was uncharacteristically beautiful, right? She had, you know, we know her for the unibrow, but she had polio, she had a bunch of other health issues. So because of that, she, she walked with a limp, she had a funny gait, one leg was a little shorter than the other. So when people saw her, she wasn't this stereotypical Latin vixen that we right. often have associated, right? Like this mm -hmm. over-sexualized, bombshell kind of woman but she bedded some of the most influential men ever, right? She had an affair with Trotsky. Lenin was attracted to her. Her husband, Diego, which is a famous, um, if you saw Diego, you would not understand the attraction to him. However, uh, he was uh, Lothario as well. And so we're gonna talk about what it means to be sensual and sexual and vivacious and alive and how we can be mothers mm -hmm. and artists and entrepreneurs and cook in the kitchen and do all of these beautiful things at once. So I'm gonna let Allison, Allison come in. You're getting ready to make some hot chocolate. Um, enjoying our coffee. We're so excited. Yeah, because yeah, we are Pittsburghers. We are Pittsburghers. So we might have places that we've been all around the world and our heritage. Yes, absolutely. We are Pittsburgh, you know, because Pittsburgh proud. Pittsburgh proud right yeah. here. Yeah. And the amazing things that the Frick does. Like absolutely. See, so if you haven't seen the exhibit, you need to go for sure. Yes. I'm excited to go next week to see the exhibit. I'll say Yeah. Um, oh my God. I just went yesterday. Okay. And I wanted to go get purposely yesterday so that I had all the experience, like just be fresh for today. Um, and it was like seriously profound. Um, you know, cause we all know Frida Kahlo through her paintings and her experience of like her uh, getting impaled by the trolley. I think it was like a handrail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, all of the anguish that went through that. Um, and then she had polio as a polio, child. Yeah, and then her talents in, in making these art pieces. But to see, uh, you know, we, it's all just kind of like this this wall of, of how she's presented through her art. But once you um, see the exhibition and you get to see the photographs and see the behind the scenes, like more, in, like definitely the more intimate like mm -hmm. scenes of her, um, just being casual, just living her life. Um, you know, um, she had her beautiful gardens and her um, friends, you know, just kind of like relaxing and laughing with her friends, you know. Um, because we know her in such turmoil, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yeah. her, her self-portraits show pain, her yeah. story is of anguish, but yeah. to see her in moments of happiness and glory, I think yeah. it gives it just a completely different side to her. Right, 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 right. And, you know, and even with like, um, uh, social media, right? Like we all have a presence on social media, right, right? But then, like how we present ourselves. But then there's like this relaxed side, you know, where we're all like hanging out, uh, getting our morning coffee. Yeah. Social, you media. know, the, uh, yeah. the original social media, the original is the girl mm -hmm. who was right. really showing people because you know she was one of the first people that kind of came out and did all these self portraits of herself right. and really so dove deep <laughs> yeah. into who you know she she was and shared those parts of it. Plus, you know, uh, Tori will share later on when we sit down with our hot chocolate, her diary that yeah. really kind of dove deep. I found it fascinating that she um, was, wanted to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. So, and she was actually very, um, very keen into medicine. And I think sometimes in her artwork, so I'm a healthcare background as a physical therapist, I found the polio and all of her chronic pain um, things very fascinating to me because of how it relates to my profession. But I also think, wow, she she really had a very big interest in medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think it reflects it even the pictures that Absolutely. she did yeah. and the details yeah. that she did in her yeah. art. 
Well, it's yeah. interesting that she wanted to be a doctor because even during that time period, a female right. doctor would have been counter in right. Mexico, right? Yeah. It was counter in, in kind of American society that you only had a few, right? So for her to even say, like, I don't want to be a nurse. Like, I, I want to be a medical yeah. doctor. Right. And she had the intelligence and the capability right. to that. So even then, before her dreams were I don't want to say derailed, they were rerouted. Right. She still was kind of a badass saying like, mm -hmm. nope, I'm doing something totally untraditional, right? I'm going to be a doctor of right. that. So, right. yeah. And, and I just, like that yeah. segment though, because talking about all of how different she is, all the different aspects of her life is when we had a conversation. So we had a brainstorming conversation about what we were going to do today. And we came up with what can we do that can kind of reflect how can we make today special, especially for you guys joining in and just showing our, our different aspects of ourselves and then how can we make that special today? Mm -hmm. So we came up with um, hot chocolate Mexican style. So, so chocolate good. caliente mexicana. So, so we really talked about these ingredients. So we're going to dive in and yep. I guess you can share this recipe um, Later on, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. Page we'll take a photo and, and post it right. to the Fricks. Yeah, so we can do that. That's a good idea. That's a good yeah, idea. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And right. there's cheaters of this. We're not going to tell you what the cheater is until afterwards. Yes. But if you don't want to make it from scratch, there are some really great ways that you can do this kind of a quick and easy that is still true and authentic to the Mexican style. So let me so, scoot out of the way so you two can oh, start. Can we talk about the ingredients for the Absolutely. day? Absolutely. All right. Because so... Um, Sorry, would you mind if there's any like feedback from the uh, um, yep, viewers? I'm yeah. Climbing in. Okay. We're doing this. <laughs> Sorry for the moving people. We're getting so, situated. All right. Okay. So we have our space here. Where can we? We're good in? right now. Do okay. you want to bring the yeah. chair? We'll talk about some of the ingredients here that we have going on. So, so exciting. I'm so excited. Right. Here we so, go. Winter season and hot chocolate bombs have been the the thing this year. So here we go. I even saw some hot chocolate bombs that were for the for made for Easter baskets. Oh yeah, that were made that were super cute. So and it and we've had a bit of a chill in the air. So I think it's a great day for some hot chocolate. And I think every day is a good day for chocolate. Yeah, um, especially Mexican hot chocolate. Mexican hot chocolate. So what is Mexican hot chocolate? It. The things that really differentiate Mexican hot chocolate is using a nice dark chocolate in the mix. So we're using a chocolate bar as well as cocoa powder. Mm. But the real differentiator, we're going to put some vanilla in, is our two secret ingredients. So we have cinnamon. Cinnamon. So and... we're using some cinnamon, which I think most people go, wow, cinnamon is kind of sweet, but it's really not very sweet at all. And um, so you can put a little bit in in a recipe yeah. and it really goes a long way because cinnamon's friend is sugar. So um, that's, Which I do we have, have some cinnamon sugar. Cinnamon sugar too, just in um, case we so, need But that. we have cinnamon and, and then, then it's always a little bit of spice. So. You know, you can pick your favorite spice out today. We are adding a little bit of chili ancho, and this has a little bit of smokiness to it, but you can pick out cayenne, whatever spice that you want to use. Yeah. We're this going a little that. we're going a little smoky, you know, we, we we're diving deep smoky. into Frida, so we're gonna add some smokiness. I usually a add bit. a little bit of cayenne, the the cinnamon and to give a really earthy flavor, just a teeny tiny little sprinkle of nutmeg. And there we go. There we and go. We, and I want to say these were donated to the cause from <laughs> my good friend, uh, Benjamin Bishop, who- Smells so good. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Selected this chocolate bar. Yeah. So, I mean, these guys are like best friends, right? Is this the best friends yeah. right here? Some nutmeg and cinnamon. Those yes. The besties in the kitchen, right? And then, so of course, and we have milk in our hot chocolate. So we have um, some whole milk. And uh, so this recipe um, I selected out was, instead of putting sugar in, because I, 
I love making my Hoodus Lichus cake, so I made it for the three of us today. And of course, we can share that recipe. Things. And it was one of the recipes that I brought to Cocinando con Arte. Bake it. So, to bake it. We loved it. Um, so we're going to use leche condensada. So we're going to use some uh, condensed milk. So leche condensada, canela, mm. crema, leche, okay. chocolate. We're all in. So okay. we're just going to get started. Let's get started. We have a nice... Uh, okay. Nice size pot here ready. Tori has, Tori is super lucky because she actually has a Mexican hot chocolate pot. Do you want to talk I about do, that? I you? do. So I forgot it. So if you're a mom, you understand if you have a toddler and they're not paying attention to you that you just run out of the house. And so um, I'm very lucky that um, I'm Mexican by Los Angeles. So I have a huge affinity. I was born and raised uh, in Los Angeles. And so my sister, and my dad for Christmas sent me, because my son loves Mexican hot chocolate, they sent me a hot chocolate pot. And what it is, is kind of like a galvanized steel pot that you can put. There's a special wand. So when you get your chocolate in there, you can really kind of mix it and put it in. I do my recipe just a little different, where we put our chocolate in, a little bit of the chocolate powder, the condensed milk, and the heavy whipping cream, and we allow it to kind of get really thick and then depending on how you want your thickness you add in milk or whatever you can use soy milk i feel like mm. if you need mm. if you can do dairy dairy definitely gives it a little bit more of a body uh, yeah. flavor yeah. um but the pot on the actual stove is so great and then you can just pour it out um but if and you're looking for that cheater abuelita Yes. So she makes these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should be fine. So all good moms, we have our cheater. We do, we do. You know? So what we need to do a quick lunch. Abuelita is either a disc. She has almost like the Swiss Miss mixes now, where it's like mm -hmm. a packet you can put in. There's a mix like Ovaltine. We have it all at my house. So depending on how how excited you want to get your yep. hot chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if your kids are like mine, they want to help mommy cook, right? And so you want to make it where it's the easiest way, where we're making the least amount of messes. So one of the ways <laughs> to do that is with this, you can definitely have the kids help you prep stuff. Yeah. Um, be no kids like to do things. So I we poured a little milk in here mm -hmm. just because we don't have the pot, and we're going to uh, melt some of this chocolate in there. So we've all washed our hands, and we're all ready. Mm -hmm. for these. these are the quick previews here. How do kids help? Kids love to do this. Who yes. doesn't love this? And you can oh, okay. oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. we're just putting a little bit of that chocolate. Just yeah. that off of there. Okay. But okay. kids love making you know breaking things so <laughs> that is true they do they do yeah, yeah. breaking and up. allowing the kids to have their hands into food right so oh, within yeah. mexican culture how we cook our food the feelings that we have oh, yeah. go into how you eat it so if i'm happy the food that i make when people eat it yeah. they become happy yeah. so when we teach yeah. that to our children to have like respect and gratitude for where the food is coming from that we have it, that it's at our table, that it's into our food. Mm -hmm. When you take it in, when you eat it, when you enjoy it, yeah. it's a different experience, right? right? So that's why I think Mexican hot chocolate is warming like to the mind, body, and spirit because yeah, right. you have these depths of flavors, yeah. but it's made with care and love. And love. Right, yeah. yeah. And it's kind and of mixed greens. together, exactly. Yeah. So it's all getting mixed together. Um, and one of the things, sorry, so I have, um, a really great community of friends in Philadelphia that um, are are from Mexico. And I remember one day we were eating, and I said, oh my gosh, this is like a recipe that was spicier than um, it was the last time we had it. And she goes, oh, you know, sometimes when you're cooking, I said, and you, the, the cook is a little heated, sometimes <laughs> it comes right out and they're cooking it. And that, Ese dicho stayed with me yeah. forever and ever because I thought, yeah, so true. You know, yeah. sure. you really have to get into that mindset of wanting to make the food and who you're making it for right. and, and love making, and care. Yeah. 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 You know, there's a reason why that there's that old adage, like, you know, mom made chocolate chip cookies for you when you came home from school. It's that idea of that tender love yeah. and that care. So yeah. like, whether you're making a bowl of cereal or hot chocolate or, you know, anything basic, especially if it's for someone that you love. Like, if you just do, you know, a little prayer over it or a moment of gratitude, all that comes out into the spirit of someone who's who's partaking in it. Yeah. I have my own 
own son, like every morning. I mean, he goes to school, you know, he was at home with homeschooling for a while, but like even with him going to school, I wake up, make sure that that child has like warm breakfast, yeah. like I'm making him pancakes or his waffles, like every single morning. And when he goes to school, I mean, it's like our tradition. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's how I show my love. So we've added some bittersweet chocolate here because, again, I think that what we're talking about with Frida and we're talking about with Mexican hot chocolate is really getting that fullness of flavors in. So we have um, bittersweet chocolate here, and then we have bittersweet um, I didn't that out. That's okay. Okay. I don't. Sorry. So there is a <laughs> recipe. More chocolate I, is I, I, Yeah. But I just kind of. Taste it and figure it out, and right, it's all right, good. Right, right, right. So, well, and I think it depends on your family too, because yeah, you might like hotter or sweeter or stronger, right, or more milky. I think it all just depends. With anything when you cook, so for those of you that do not cook with condensed milk, um, um, just so you can see, up. it is a little bit thicker. Um, Alice is going to actually tell us what she puts in it with the Tres Leche cake, right? Because it's yes. three milks. Yeah. So but you can see. Some people like to add this to their coffee. Yeah. So I love. It's really good. I love Vietnamese pour over coffee. And yes. they always put condensed yes. milk into their yeah. coffee. Mm -hmm. And I find that, like, one good cup of coffee instead of, like, five crappy ones <laughs> is so much better. So right. oh I'm going to put a yes. little bit of so condensed milk into my coffee now. Yeah. Milk that has been boiled down with sugar, so that's what leche con mensada is, as opposed to evaporated milk, where it's milk that the water, you know, has yeah. been taken mm -hmm. out. So, and in in many cultures, um, canned milks are the way because refrigeration can be less. Mm -hmm. This is something that can and be it can scored. go much farther. Like you saw yeah, that can can. Can curtains on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, you see this can. It's actually pretty large. If you were a massive family. You could really make that go in your cooking. And this is like, I, I kind of wish that people could see inside here because honestly, uh, yeah, let's bring, there, I don't know, but we're going to bring the camera in here closer because this is just magical. Do you see this? Oh my gosh. Uh, Complete magical. Let's see what we have here. Yes. I love yeah, the condensed nuts. Look at that. Sarica. Oh my let's gosh. See. This is complete magic uh, right here. I Look love at when this. Alice speaks Spanish. <laughs> Coming in at Make 1230 us. for the exhibition. Oh, awesome. A little smiley face over here. Awesome. So, Ancho, good choice. Good yeah, good we're good. a little smoky today. Look at oh, that. Big. And oh, look at oh how gorgeous gosh. that is. I mean, I wish, see, this is when I wish smell vision was a thing because it, it does, smells. Oh my gosh. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna add mm. some of our friends in here. Okay. So, so what let's we, add. What do you want to do next? So let's add again. So vanilla is also. It's. It can be very sounds bitter. better here. Oh, again. it sounds better. Yeah, I'm gonna closer. move this oh, over. Okay. But so we're gonna. She's saying the okay. scent sounds better up close. Oh, yeah. So. I'm gonna oh, move this over here. That. So we're gonna add. Give us oh one second. We're adjusting we for you guys. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is amazing. Yes. This mm -hmm. smells. So, smell. Lovely. Thank you, Trader Joe's. Mm. I always um, bring some uh, vanilla back when I go to the after party. Wonderful so choice of activity. Well, yes, you, Judy. Well, thank you, Judy. Oh, Judy, thank you for tuning in. Yes. Yes, you, Judy. So, a little bit of uh, vanilla, vanilla, canela. Mm. Oh, my gosh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Look at that. Look how pretty that looks all in the Should we get it? Yeah. yeah let's do the camera. Yeah. 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 Let's Aww. look how pretty. Look at that simmering. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Folks. So we this have. This looks so good. Yes. Okay. Yes. So and now here comes the, the trick. Yeah. Hi, mom from Brittany. Oh, hey, Brittany. <laughs> Thank you. And a tiny grater. So we have a little tiny grater. Look at that. Oh, okay. And a little bit of nutmeg really does go far. So just so you yep. guys know. Just a you, little yep. tiny bit. You don't want to put Baby that whole. See it. There we go. You don't want to put that whole nut in there. because Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're no, going to have heartburn yeah. for days. <laughs> It's just like everything in life, right? Just yeah. a little bit kind of goes a long yeah. way. So look at that. Let's get this all Yay. going together. Oh, my God. Hi, Mom 
mommy. Oh my mommy's gosh. watching. I know. I saw Smell that. Vision. You have to tell us what chocolate you use and where you bought it from. Oh, okay. Allison. Okay. 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 Hold, Hold on. on. Hold on. I will show you. We crumpled it, I but we're working it on it. But I got this. This was uh, from Trader Joe's. And you Bar. can use whichever mm -hmm. chocolate. So I'm going to give a plug because I love small businesses. Yeah. We live next to Anderson's Candy and Baby. Okay. And so oh, you can yeah. go in and get some of their chocolate chips that you can melt down. Um, you could buy your favorite chocolate bar. You can buy um, unsweetened chocolate, okay. bitter chocolate. Yes. Um, my friend it's Nettie used to love cream. cooking with, um, like, bitter orange chocolate. So I do have a, I have a, a blender over there. Or hey, a, thanks, Braddock uh, Library. Okay. We're so oh excited. Oh, my gosh, You're Braddock Library. This. All right. Oh, Look at how we're gorgeous. Gonna, we're going to really pump up the cream factor here uh -oh, with here some go. Look at that. Cream. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So this is actually heavy so cream. cream. Just so you're like... adding fat into it as well. Yes. If you don't want to do the heavy cream, you can do regular milk or another kind of milk option, right? right? Mm -hmm. But just know that non-dairy options mean that the texture is going to so change just a little bit. Okay. Do some of that on top. All right. Yeah, so we're going to make a little bit We're adding a little bit more spice. Yeah. Woo -hoo, look at just that. Just a little <laughs> smokiness. Again, a little tiny bit. Although, you know, si la cocinera está un poquito picada, you know, could be a little bit more. Yeah. But we're just yeah. adding just so, a little right. Can we taste it? Does yes. It kind of judge? Yeah. Yeah, so that's exactly Spiciness. that's exactly what we're going to do. Yes. So we have this all together. From South America is so much better and has so much more flavor. Which one? Right. So cocoa powder from Sorry. South America is going to be closer to where the okay. cocoa bean is. So it's okay. going to have less dilution so and be a little yes. bit more native. Um, and every country has something very different. So um, if you are talking about like chocolate in European countries, it's yeah. going to be a little bit more bitter. Um, if you're talking about South American countries, we like our things sweet. So like things are going oh to gosh. have a sweeter. I need to get a okay. spoon. I'm gonna try some of this. Hold on. You know, everybody get a little taste. Alice okay. is handing me a fork. I know. <laughs> I think it's oh. thick enough. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's oh. amazing. <laughs> Want it to have that sticky. thick. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and it's sticking. Oh my gosh. This is honestly, I feel really bad that you're, you guys are watching this um, and not here with us. But you know, one day soon, we will all be together and have a good time with it. I this. know, right? So, uh, right, right, right. we got the selfies going we'll on. Make it the, uh, some oh, and so, so, we're going to. I just wanted to say something real quick. So when you're making certain things and you want to make them like Mexican, um, I make the Mexican cornbread. Mm -hmm. Now you can use your regular cornbread mix and you can add in cayenne Alabama. pepper, chili pepper, jalapenos, bell peppers. Um, but I like to That's make mine in a skillet. Yeah. So I'm yeah, yeah, putting it into yeah. a pan and it gets a little bit, it's a little bit thinner, so it's not going to be big, but it's this really great kind of crunchy uh, yeah. flavor. Yeah. And so pairing up with a Mexican cornbread, you can have your hot chocolate and whatever it is. But the great thing with the cornbread is, is that you can balance the spice. So, yeah. and you can make Mexican um, brownies as well. So we were talking about that too because it kind of has those same ingredients. That Absolutely, we were talking yeah. About. I um, used to, um, when I worked with students, I would make um, Mexican brownies for the students at final time. And they used to love it. They come in. The great thing is, is that with chocolate, you get the hit of the sweet first, and then you get the hit of the, the spicy. So they could eat it, and then they would go, oh, what is that? And it's like a little tickle in the back, and it's kind of like an unexpected surprise that was always really nice. So, we're, so, little part two of this, we're going to serve ourselves, and I know you guys don't get to, but you can pretend maybe for right <laughs> now. And we're going to get a little cup of coffee, um, and, and, and we're going to have some conversation yep, about the exhibition. So, 
grab a cup oh of my coffee. God. Um, do you want to get a ladle and we yes, will yes, yes, yes. ladle go. this out and put it in some mugs? I have these mugs. Where so we have? I, I have, have a mug over here. here. We got the yinzer. Yeah, we could put a little bit of here. That's oh, I'm in the oh, I'm in there. That's right. Uh -huh. I'm concerned long. We could put a little bit of hot chocolate in my I think coffee. I was thinking that too. We yeah. Like almost a Mexican hot chocolate mocha? Okay. Oh my god. Get this going here without making the giant. There we go. Oh, this is super amazing. Just put a little bit of hot chocolate. Oh, this is super cool. We're trying to make homemade yeah. whipped cream right now too. Okay, okay, well, it's all good. Mm. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Actually, you know what? It's all good. Here we go. Oh, I know what we need. Mm. Oh my goodness. This is. So we're all moms here. So, hey, we tried to whip it up, and <laughs> now we're going to whip it up right here. Yep. There we go. Oh, here. Awesome. Um, right in here. Oh my goodness. And then we could even give it a little sprinkle of some. Yes. I'll cinnamon. take the cinnamon, but not. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do. Oh, you don't want the cinnamon sugar? No, I didn't want the, the, ancho. the ancho. <laughs> <laughs> I like being spicy, but not that spicy. Mm. Yeah. Well, okay. my family would tell you there's enough spice with me, but no. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Spice. So we're going to just yeah. transition for a second. So allow us to sit down and we're going to bring oh, the. the yeah. yeah. So I'm fast. So, so we're going to kind of move over. Can we show okay. inside my mug? Yes, though? look at that. Look at how yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Where did you Where get did you... those mugs? Uh, yeah. Those are from a Pittsburgh yeah. company. I think nice. it's an artist. Oh, God, okay. what's the name of the group? Pittsburgh Ceramics or something. I They were the they three resorts festival. And I love these mugs. I love the mugs. Okay. Oh, right yeah. there. We should be good. Okay. So are we good? Oh, yeah. Nice yeah. Fit everybody in there? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I think we're gonna lovely, 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 lovely. Mama Juju said there is enough spice. She agrees with you. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I think we just need some plates and some How hot plates. do you want to make the mixture? So I told them a light boil, but some really like it boiling hot. It really depends. Some people like tempered tea. Some people like really hot. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to drink it without like burning you. Um, but again, if you're making it for kids, I always feel like just enough that like there's a little right. bit of steam or a little bit of like um, a simmer, but not a boil. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want to you don't want to scald the milk is what no. you want to do. The no. milk can get hot very quickly, especially the more fat in the milk that happens, the quicker that heat will stay within your recipe too. So, um, okay. and constantly stirring it brings that um, temperature down when you're stirring in a pot. So when you constantly stir, you bring that temperature down in the pot, so you can keep it that way. So you can keep everything well blended. So yeah. yeah. Oh, this is, I love having a uh, like conversations with my friends. And it's been so long since like this pandemic. I know. Uh, that yeah, it's nice to get together. Where do you want to sit? Oh, 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 I was going to get myself. Okay, so we have our Tris Lecce's cake already made by Alice, who is a fabulous Fabulous. Some fresh oh my God. We have a little bit Look. of, uh, it's hot in our kitchen today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that pot is especially good to make the hot chocolate. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. oh, right. oh, gorgeous. We have a yeah. nice little front here. Okay, Tori, okay. I'm going to make sure you're in. Uh, love those frame pieces on the wall. Actually, <gasps> look, Alice, look, look, look what's right next to you. Yes. Yeah, I can't believe it. I know. Uh, I that is so, so cool. Yeah, so all these pieces, a lot of these pieces I got when I was in Mexico um, for various trips, as you can see on the wall, um, that I love Mexican artwork. And uh, yes. Hey, do we want some water, ladies? Let's get some water real quick. While we're yeah, sure. Thank you. Some water, enjoying. So yeah. I got like this cake. So we were talking about that. I'm going to just show you guys so you can see what this looks like and up close. Um, but uh, look at how gorgeous that is. So light and year. fluffy. And I'll let Alice talk about what is in Trace Leches and how you make yeah. it and why it's so decadent. But I just wanted to. Uh, yeah. 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 Could we move that a little closer, I think? And move it down a little bit. Maybe we can make, move the. Um... Here we go. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. 
Oh, jealous, jealous. Okay, we just have some people that are jealous. That's okay. Okay. All right, we're, there we're yeah, let's kind of trying to get the we'll right get, angle so yeah. we can get everybody in. Yes. Tori, yeah. Yes. Tori, we just go over just a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay, there, there we go. go. Okay. I think All this right. is good. Quite the baker, Alice. Yes. That's okay. true. That's true. Okay. All right. There we go. So, mm -hmm. can I select this cake? This is such a perfect combination. I was like, so yeah. what can we serve today? And okay. bringing a little bit of our conversation about cocinando con arte. Mm -hmm. So it is our work between working with food and art and combining that yes. to really appreciate culture and bring women together in a in way Pittsburgh. Yeah. in Pittsburgh. The, or have Latino heritage, and some of our cohorts have been um, first generation, and some yeah. have been second generation. Some have lived here, you know, all their life, but are of um, Latino descent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and the whole idea was again, I was talking a little bit before. Um, the um, the whole reason like it came together for me was um, a long time ago. I was thinking about um, growing up here in Pittsburgh. There was not, uh, like, there was, like, very few other Latinos in Pittsburgh. And my dad, you know, like, having the experience of talking to my dad about being Mexican, um, and he would always say, say your last name the right way, Zapata. Mm -hmm. You're not a Zapata. Your last name is Zapata. And he would constantly, like, show me pictures of Emiliano Zapata. Yeah. And, like, talk about that. And so it was, like, this conversation that we had, just the two of us, but, like, there was like no other Latinos in, in Pittsburgh at the time. I mean, this is like you know, it's born in '74 here in Pittsburgh, but the the community was just so small. It was almost um, just completely foreign. So you know, um, so my grandfather moved to Pittsburgh when he was 13 years old on his own, on his own, no other. You know, yeah. it was like we moved here at 13 yeah. um, to work. You know, we were talking a little bit yesterday, or. We're talking yesterday about um, when people move to the United States from a different country, there's like some extreme um, situations that make people have to leave their home and to go to a place where they don't speak the language and to have to try to like um, figure out a new way to right. survive, right? Right. And so when he moved here um, and then had my dad and, and you know, had his sons here, it, it you know, the the culture was very, they, they, they had to assimilate. Right, to, I think that is a big survive. thing because we had um, women in our cohorts that were, um, that, you know, might not, didn't speak, don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I remember something that, so we had two people that asked us when we were looking for people to join. One was, hey, I don't speak Spanish, but I'm of Latino descent, can I come? And one that said, I don't speak English, I'm just <laughs> here, can I come? And of course our answer was, yes, yes. Because yes. yes. you know, everybody can come to the table. You know, yeah. I think that that's right. the biggest thing that came with, um, Allison is an amazing artist. She really is. And I said, Allison, if you can make me do any piece of art, it would almost be a miracle. <laughs> I'm terrible. My art is this, not cooking, but when she works with our group, and has us bring pictures of our of our families mm. and where we come from and then put that together in a work of art it's amazing so yeah so one of the few pieces of art that i actually have hanging up in my house oh. my little cuadrito que yo hice that mm. has my abuelita my mother and myself and then part of the picture then is me and um my husband and our kids, five of them, who took a trip to Ecuador about three years ago. Oh, yeah. It was so magical, a lot of those moments to bring your kids back to the place that you were as a child. So yeah. it's so important. So, and we were talking about, you know, so we did, we make food. So one of the foods I made was um, tres leches cake that my oh, abuelita yes. made. So tres yeah. leches, three kinds of milk. So you make mm. a batter. So the cake batter is actually made separating, oh separando um, las yemas, the whites and the yolks of the, um, to make the batter. So you separate it out, you make it super fluffy. Right. So there's room in there to add, after you're done baking the cake, the three leches, the three milks. So 
uh, leche condensada, leche evaporada, y leche de crema. So cream, oh my God. condensed milk, and evaporated. Um, evaporated milk. And then she added beautiful whipped cream on top. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, like I'm halfway through and I'm at a sugar high in a very good way, right? Yeah. So the great thing about Tres Leches is that it's it's a very sweet dessert, so you don't need a lot, right? Like a cake base? No. Really, so the cake base actually does not have that much sugar in right, there. Right, absolutely. So yeah. it's just something that's so wonderful, and it's such a great treat to have. And not everybody makes it well, so when you get it well, um, I think Cookie Dough is I know. very upset. He, he hears no. Do you need a little bit of Do you need a little bit of milk cake? But I think um, going back to the whole idea behind having um, close down the con art day, and um, uh, not like collective, it, it is really about sharing stories, right? Right. So like every one of us comes from like a long lineage of, of ancestors who have gone through their own life experiences in to get us into the places, you know, to where we are now. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. And so like that, all those incredible stories, all those incredible life choices, um, all those aspirations, like we're the result. Right. Of like all of their aspirations that mm -hmm. get us to be the point. Like we were just talking about before before we started about what you know your how your mom like yeah. really wanted you to like thrive. And, and the same for my family, right? And so like that's why I feel like um, those stories are just enriched in, in but also brought back out to the conversation through art, through the photographs like we saw at at, uh, at the Frida Kahlo exhibition. Like all of those right. like, those can just go we just keep piling new experiences on, but like and I think that's why it's so fun because so as we were getting ready to spend our afternoon with our friends on the yeah. Instagram page, thank you for still tuning in. I was looking at one of one of my favorite pictures um, because Frida made over 200 uh, mm. paintings. So mm. there, we have some fun facts about Frida, but this was one of my favorites because this is uh, one of her paintings, and this is um, Frida here in the child. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So. So it turns out that Frida's dad was a German photographer, and the, her mom was an American Indian and from Spain. So she really had this diverse background, and I feel like it's such a reflection. And this was in um, 1907, so she was born in 1907, and um, her history is just so incredible that it's the melting pot of who she was. So she was born in Mexico, mm -hmm. but her parents were not of Mexican descent, but of that very vibrant culture. And her dad had been, you know, very active part of her life as well as her mom. And he was very, very, very strict. Too. Yeah. Her father so her was father. very political and that led, I think for her at a very early age. So most stories will indicate that like Frida was her father's favorite and, and her and her, her mother, mother would butt heads because her mother thought that she needed to act like a senorita, right? Uh -huh. Like there's certain like ways that she should about. dress and she should function. Mm -hmm. So her father would give her, would talk to her, um, not as a man, but almost as an equal. And so I think, Which you know, how much. many of our ancestors have done that to either our parents, our grandparents, right. or to us of, you know, you have this capability to do that. So part of the reason why Frida was such a powerhouse is that she was, always able to live in her own, right? Yeah. So at a young age, she didn't want to wear dresses, she wore pants. As she got older, she believed in feminism before it was really a thing. Right. She wanted to be a doctor before that was really a female kind of dictated role. So there was this woman- She was about changing her year of her birth. Yeah, she wanted to be associated with the Mexican Revolution for more independence. Yes, more really? people. Yeah, I didn't know that. She, she changed, changed it to three years, years later. Three years later. Oh, so. I do that too. <laughs> you can do that too. Forty. I know. <laughs> I can do that too. Thirty-nine. <laughs> um, so, and I actually look. So we did some fun facts about her. So her full name was Magdalena Frida Carmen Calo y Calderon. I was like. I love oh, that yeah, was yes. like her full name. And so we did talk about that too, about, you know, your name is very important, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and how you yeah. choose to, you know, tell people, please call me. It's important. That. Yeah. yeah. So then she went by Frida. So yeah. So she, that, that blocks assimilation. Yeah. Right. 
That's right. That's absolutely and right. I, I think in America, so many people miss the fact that in different cultures, your name is given to you in different ways and has different meanings. So we're seeing a lot of this stop Asian hate, that, you know, what's happening in right. our Asian community. And so many people will say that, you know, their names are mispronounced or, you know, oh, I'm just going to call you, you know, whatever. And it's because we've decided in a Western state of mind that that's a counter name. Oh, it's a weird name. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to do this. Well, like John and Mary is a weird name in Korea, right? And right. so it's understanding that names really have a lot of power. They're given in birth. Like um, many Hindu names are given a year after birth. So they get a temporary name. And as they grow and develop, then they're given their given name. And oh, so wow. they can have this chance to kind of develop. So the name is then associated with whom they are, right? So I'm named after my father, so like I have power with my name because there's lineage to it. Yeah. And so um, his name was my grandfather's middle name. So there's three generations of this tie. So when we can pay attention that names and how we pronounce them and why they're important have a deeper seed than just, oh, I'm gonna call you such and such. Like, oh, that's a cute name. Um, there's really kind of power into that. And I think that shows right. with Frida because mm -hmm. We know her as a singular name, right? She doesn't right. have to have anything else. You can right. say Frida. Yeah. Right. People will know. She's like Madonna. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Madonna was outbid on by her artwork. Madonna wanted to buy a piece of her art when it was an oh. auction, and she was actually outbid for it. So, I know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, and I chose to keep my last name. You know, yeah. when I got married, I decided I'm this is who I am. I'm so right. Sick of right. This, I, I think that, you know, everybody's choice is so important. I chose the hyphenate, um, my last name. Um, and I think I love Beckett. And then when people look at Beckett and go, Beckett, how are you Hispanic? I go, oh, you know, we have to dig a little bit deep. And just because my last name doesn't sound Hispanic doesn't mean I am not right. of Latino descent. And right, I think right, that's right. important too, because, and if you look way back in, in our family, we have a lot of Italian and one of my daughters did some DNA testing. So our, even their testing showed a very big di diverse ancestry. Um, so I think that that's also super yeah. important. So the more like, it seems like so many things in my mind of how diverse, how still central and close things are. So the further yeah. away you think that all these cultures are different, I think we're not. Well, I think that's proof mm -hmm. that the Latino culture is so pervasive because when we talk about Latino culture, we think of Latin America and Central America and Mexico and South America and Spain. And culture in Spain, which is Latino culture, is very different than it would be over in Mexico, very right. different than the Caribbean, right? right? So in the Caribbean, we have a lot of Afro- Afro-Latinas, um, you know, Afro whereas in Mexico, we have a lot of Spanish and a lot of Chinese, right? right so, right. you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know this, Mexicans are most closely in DNA related to those from China yeah. um, because of the Great Migration and things like that. So when we learn of those things in yeah. our own culture, um, you know, people will put this classification on Latinos, and it's very different, right? We have that I'm um, first generation, I'm immigrant, I'm, you know, once, twice removed from, you know, a, a country or whatever else. I have a last name, but I don't have that identity because I don't know that side of my family. Like, it's a culture that I think people can participate in because we don't decide how you get to decide what you're, how, how Latino you want to be, right? right, right so right. some people, it's just name. Some people, it's food. Some, it's culture. Some, it's family. Some, it's tradition. Some, right. it's religion. And I think that's what makes Latino culture so beautiful is that there's so many different entities and pieces. Like even this hot chocolate, we made Mexican hot chocolate, but if we made it from other countries, it would have been a very different spin on just the right. same right. thing right. to right. drink. Like Ecuador is the exporter of bananas and cacao, cocoa, and um, the they have chocolatiers there that have one you know world chocolate competitions and that you can purchase it there that is something we can't you know purchase here so and that chocolate can be very oh, different so, <laughs> <going on>. um, <laughs> so uh we have like 10 minutes left to talk about yeah this. So, do you think that does anybody have any questions oh my god we have like 
we we're using technology. We so, are. We have yeah. the technology here. So if you have any questions, let us know. We can answer them. I did want to show. This yeah. was given to me as a gift for my 30th birthday. My 30th birthday was um, a really amazing year. I, I really entered my 30s kind of in the <laughs> space. Um, and so this is Frida Kahlo's private diary, and it's translated. And what's beautiful about oh, this is wow. that it is her handwriting. So you can see right here she kind of painted Diego. I'm going to actually bring it over here yeah. to you guys so you can see it. So you can see her handwriting that is in it. Oh and my. then like some of the, I'm going to see if you can find it, really like some of her paintings, oh like things that people have never seen wow. before, right? Like Madeira, Amor, Calor, Dolor, Rumor, Humor. Like she's just kind of like rhyming and, and doing things in just these wow. beautiful, beautiful paintings. And then what's really great about this particular book is that in the back, each page has a translation for you. So you oh can my. see it translated into English. There's a little bit of a biography and a little bit of um, insight behind it. That's so beautiful. this is Frida Kahlo, an intimate self-portrait um, by Alas Rotas. And it's just, this is just amazing. I've not gotten fully into it, but just looking at some of her private drawings, mm. her pictures, um, we definitely know several, probably about 15, 20 of her very famous photos um, or art paintings that she's done. Um, but she, like Allison said, she, she did over 200. Mm -hmm. And so there's far more that's in there. Um, they got the book from Amazon. You can order it from Amazon or, or get it from any local bookshop. Um, but it was um, really kind of like a, uh, a beautiful gift given to me by like some of my closest girlfriends. So I hold it very dear to my heart. Um, but what I love most about it is, is as you're going through, you really do have this intimate access. You feel like you get to know her that pain and that anguish just a bit more. Yeah. So if you can believe it or not, even though she was so open with so many of her arts, art pieces, there were still some things that yeah. she kept hidden that were in this diary, right? That's pretty amazing. So, I'm excited. excited. So, so I'm gonna go next week to see the exhibit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, preparing for today um, and just kind of loving mm. all things of strong women, you know, because mm -hmm. how, how can we make a difference be strong women, mm -hmm. support strong mm -hmm. women. That's what we can do. But we're not the first. There's trailblazers. And mm -hmm. I would say that Fia is a trailblazer. She attended in a gurney, in a stretcher, her first art exhibit. When she herself was in the hospital, she insisted on going to an art gallery to exhibit oh, her things. And she yeah. um, showed up in a stretcher. So I, I, saw, I saw yesterday there was an award ceremony. It was something. It was a national award that she got for her art. Yeah. Um, because when she first came like into, I guess, the scene, she was more known as Diego's wife. wife right? And now, yeah. now years later, yeah. Yeah. Diego's I think known she's as her, her, yeah, right. her husband. But she, um, she showed up to that award ceremony in a full body cast. Yeah. Like, yeah, which was like wild, you know? And also, she was 20 years younger than him. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When he was a, a, a Lombardo, at the point that she met him, his reputation far succeeded him. He cheated on her with her sister. Which, dear God. Right. And that was crazy in itself. And then she <laughs> cheated God. on him with Trotsky, and then she cheated on him with Lennon, and she cheated on him with Josephine Baker. Um, and so, you know, we had talked about the sexuality Super and chocolate. Exactly. She, she, I mean, when we say she bent all rules, I mean, she lived it through and yeah. through, right? Yeah. She loved. She was with other women and she dressed as a man. Yeah. And she had all different, you know. But she never claimed that she felt that she was one gender type, right? She didn't classify herself as a lesbian or bisexual or anything else. And I don't even know if they would have maybe even had that kind of indicator at that point. Right, right. But she, in, in, a, in a biography that I had read, she said, I loved what I loved and how I loved it, right? Yeah. So we would think of her almost as someone who just was like, I, I love this fruit. Like, there's beauty in that fruit. Like, she found beauty in everyday ugly, I think, right? Because, like, Diego by church, like, by all, even if you look at him now, he wasn't handsome. He had this belly that was like out to here. Uh, yeah. He had saggy jaws. Like he wasn't handsome. Um, and we Which would is, often think yeah. that she wasn't very pretty either. But you so know that she was like, actually set she's... up as being avant-garde for her time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the kind of beauty that she possessed from like the unibrow, because she also hid, although she had a lot of artwork, um, with nude, nudity and all these kind of things. She also wore the the long dresses because she hid her polio. Yeah. Yeah. So she yeah. hid that. And then later in life, she ended up, um, she had multiple illnesses.
has had a um, a bad foot that ended up having an amputation. Yeah. So yeah, she, had, she so has so pain. much pain in her yeah. life, um, yet she still kind of persevered on mm -hmm. to do so many great things yeah. for the and art community. We are talking yeah. about that. Oh, here we go. We're talking about um, her blue house oh, too. Okay. Yep. Okay. So oh, one of the things okay. that Free uh, did it was this total idea of self care, right? And as uh, the self care is yeah. 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 each of you uh, enjoy uh, your own uh, bubble bath, right? Yeah. So yeah. as oh, women, so powerful women, it. mothers, entrepreneurs, artists, taking a moment, yeah. like yeah. sitting and having hot chocolate and cake or coffee oh, with your friends, and joining us for this, like this is all forms of self care. And so if I can leave you with anything, like Take it a moment every day to find joy that builds that self care that fills that yeah. metaphorical hot chocolate cup up um, and makes you guys happy. We have a few minutes left, but I just wanted to express my appreciation to you guys for allowing oh, me to join the conversation. Oh, and thank, you. Gosh, thank, thank you. I want to thank you both for joining today because I was, um, you know, I, I pitched this idea to the Frick Museum and um, they were on board with it and with with the Not White Collective and like so everybody. You know, again, sharing their viewpoints and their experiences, and I, I just felt that this is something that again is more communal. You know, it's like yeah. to bring in um, many. Because really, that's the crux of what Latino culture is about, right? It's like mm -hmm. you feel like your family. So whether there's one or two people, you know, the door is always open. Like, let me cook for you. Like, right. let me get you something. Let what do you mean? In la cocina. What do you mean? Like, yes. you know, I feel like that is really kind of our testament. If we have to be known for something, it's that we come with like open arms and open heart, right? Yes. And that Allison invited us to her beautiful home to cook. Oh, my gosh. And it's the most you. amazing day today. I, every time you are with women who are passionate, who empower other women, it's true. you just do so much for mm -hmm. the rest of the day because right. sometimes life is hard. Yes. Yeah. Frida's life was hard, yet her expression of life and how she lived was amazing. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that surrounding myself with, I mean, these kind of women. I could cry because of my passion. Yeah. They're so beautiful. They make they make life amazing for oh, people and, and the people they touch. So, and everybody who tuned in today, so grateful. I try to do some social media things, probably not the greatest, but <laughs> I, I try. I try yeah. every day. And the people who tuned in today, again, without you guys tuning in, oh, also, God. Oh, yeah, thank you, guys. Oh, thank we're so appreciative. Uh, do you want to give your handles? We have only a minute left, so you can follow Allison. Allison, Allison on, on Instagram, Allison Zapata Artist, artist A-L-I-S-O-N-Z-A-P-A-T-A, -A -A artist. Yes. Yep. Super simple, Alice Beckett Rumberger, and it's the same on uh, Instagram. Um, and then Allison the Berg on Twitter, and I think that that little handle is going to get a little bit busier, maybe. Uh, we'll oh, see. But um, yeah, and I am Self Care Senorita on Facebook and Instagram, so you can follow and us our self care along. group. Yeah, and oh, we have. Um, if you are female or femme, uh, you are welcome to join our private group for women, Self Care Senoritas with an S. I'm sharing all self care tips, and both of these beautiful women have been a part of that journey. Yes. We're coming up in May on a full year of being incorporated, which is really huge. Exciting. So Exciting. follow us along. We're going to be doing some really cool stuff coming up shortly. So anyway, thanks, everyone. We have one minute. So muchas gracias por yes. todos que escucharon hoy día y que se diviertan. Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine wherever you are. Find mm -hmm. it. Also, don't Love forget it. to um, follow not, hashtag not white collective yes. on Instagram. Um, we have so much amazing stuff. And I was yeah. going to say, we were Best Artists Collective, voted by the uh, Pittsburgh people. Yeah, uh, the City Paper. Yeah. The City Paper is the best of Pittsburgh. So, um, yay. Okay, so thank you, Frick. Muchas uh, gracias. And thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Frida Kahlo, for, for inspiring us today. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Yes.